So hello everybody. Um, I am Krishan, and uh, we also have on this call uh, Ajoy and, and Vasavi, uh, my co-founders uh, at uh, Agastya Consulting. Uh, at Agastya Consulting, uh, we are uh, we are an education technology focused company, and our aim is to get the you know best in class uh, when it comes to virtual education uh, to India. And and in that quest. Uh, we have partnered up with the the, the team at New World. Uh, we have uh, Deneen, I think Damien and, and Diane uh, on this call. Uh, and uh, our view is that uh, New World represents uh, exactly what uh, you know exactly what best in class global practice represents from a standpoint of uh, uh, learning platforms for uh, children across age groups. And uh, having had one very interesting uh, and informative session with Fiona earlier on a couple of weeks ago. It's our pleasure uh, to, to be interacting with you all and uh, having Deneen present to you the uh, power and efficacy of this platform. We hope uh, you feel as excited by it as we have done thus far. Uh, before I pass it on to uh, uh, Deneen to, to take us through the platform, I will also uh, just briefly comment and, and commend you all. Uh, all three of us are ASP parents and we have uh, you know, we hope you're all well. We hope you're all, uh, you know, managing to uh, navigate these challenging times. And uh, all we'll say is we have been absolutely blown away. And thank you very much for uh, being so available and, and making such 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 a wonderful learning environment available for our children. Aman, who's a joy son, is in the ninth grade. Uh, Vasvi and my daughter, uh, Leela, is is uh, in the first grade. And, uh, you know, we, we are truly thankful for, for how well you managed to keep Keep them, uh, keep them involved, engaged, and uh, moving forward uh, in their learning. Given, given what challenging times these are. So, with that comment, I will uh, hand you over to Deneen, who is the director of academic uh, instruction at uh, at New World, uh, and she will, uh, you know, she will uh, take uh, start presenting the platform. Ajoy Vasvi, do you have anything to add at this point, or, or should we kick off? No, we can kick off. Okay. I think we're good. Deneen, over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate um, you all giving us the time this evening or this morning. I'm going to keep saying the wrong time zone. Bear with me, or maybe I'll be in the right time zone with many of you. I'm in the United States um, right now. But again, uh, my name is Denine Jimerson. I'm the director of curriculum, uh, and we will be brief. Um, yet we will try to share the power of of what we're introducing to you. Um, the, uh, today and uh, and also have time for questions and answers at questions at the end. Uh, so you've seen the brief agenda for this evening or today's conversation. Um, as we previously mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, we are a partnership um, and we were um, started our conversation um, with Fiona and uh, and a few others over the past few weeks and we're asked to present to you um, our product. We've got a blended learning program and our vision, as you can see, is to empower students, teachers and parents um, with the technology to learn, but also with the, um, you know, different resources and tools that might be a little different than the usual that's out there. Uh, I used to be a teacher, as you all are, uh, in an IB school. So I've worked in the, the IB program for many years prior to um, working in administration and then and then venturing off into uh, into a private, you know, to, to the corporate world. Uh, but um, we're very excited to be with you this evening. And we want to make sure that um, that we're touching everything that we believe is important to you based on our conversations. However, we are very open to hearing what you have to say and your feedback and your questions at the end. If you like, you can type questions in the chat as we go. And as I promised, we'll have lots of time at the end to um, answer questions or, or just, you know, receive some feedback and chat. Um, our guiding principles, as you can see, uh, are, the strengths of our program is that we're, uh, our, we can be used very easily to individualize um, learning for your students. Um, we like to provide students with the opportunity to um, problem solve and, and use critical thinking skills in addition to working with, you know, specific skills and concepts um, that, that are kind of required along the way as you're learning. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, this is Christian. Sorry. No worries. 
Uh, yeah, just, no worries. Just a question. I want to make sure that everybody that is participating is able to see, uh, you know, see the screens that you are showing and, and as you go over the presentation. So could we perhaps um, um, just get confirmation from a few of our participants that they are seeing the presentation that you are that you are going over? Yeah, we see the guiding principles. Awesome. Thank you so much. Please yeah. keep going. Kineen. Yes, no, thank you. Uh, so in addition to our uh, program, which includes, um, uh, it's a blended learning program that includes, uh, that's based on story-based learning, game-based learning, and play-based learning. We also have assessments and diagnostic tools that can be used um, by teachers and parents if they like um, to see where kids are sort of a formative tool and to um, give them a snapshot of where kids are to, to drive their instructional decision making. Um, we are, have been um, used by teachers in schools all over the world and we have been successful working with students, um, special needs students, uh, general ed students, second language students, so we're flexible enough that we meet the needs of of all students that we work with so far. And uh, again, we're presenting today uh, sort of a third through fifth grade um, view of, of, of our offerings. However, uh, and then and that was as um, suggested by Fiona, but uh, we do offer resources and, and, and stories and games for students um, pre-K through eighth grade. Uh, our story is based on uh, we've got a big story <laughs> with our with our our, our store the, the lesson based stories and the games that are in our platform. As you can see, we were anime style. We have anime anime style characters. Um, our stories are very graphic novel like text bubble, um, and we have a, a very diverse cast of characters, uh, including. Of course, students you know from different um, countries, as well as students with different um, academic needs. Are one of our newest uh, castmates. He is uh, his name is Alfie, and he um, is on the autism spectrum. And he has a a droid that um, engages with him and and kind of supports him in um, you know visual clues or, or social clues so that cues so that he knows when to speak or how to react to things potentially. And Alfie is also nonverbal, so his droid also speaks for him. So in addition to Alfie, and you know, as I mentioned, we have a very wide range of uh, cast of characters and we're very excited. The kids, uh, this is what our, like our number one engagement with the kids is our, our um, graphics are, are uh, they're beautiful, they're engaging, and then the stories and the games uh, and the off-screen activities also uh, really bring students in. So um, we're going to talk a little bit today about using New World as a formative assessment tool. As I mentioned, it is very flexible. It has many purposes. Um, it can be used very flexibly in many different ways, but we're going to look at it today through the lens of as a formative assessment tool. Uh, we do uh, make sure that our stories, our games, our off-screen lesson, the off-screen experiences, that everything is research-based. And um, we have quite an extensive library of um, research that we've used uh, to build uh, what we're providing for you all. Um, again, coming from an IB background, I'm, I feel very um, humbled and excited to be talking with you all this evening because I know how uh, you want to integrate curriculum with real world situations and, and we believe that a lot of our um, offerings do do that as well and fit very well with your philosophies, with your instructional philosophies. Uh, again, we um, support all students. Uh, the, we've got the engagement piece, um, interesting graphics. I've already mentioned a lot of these things. We do focus a lot on situa situated language, meaning that we want to increase all the, the students' um, academic vocabulary as well as their language function um, abilities, uh, meaning that they're able to use language as a tool to communicate effectively uh, using academic language and again knowing how to use the language whether it's to um whether it's to um 
to explain cause and effect or to provide, you know, to support their reasoning with evidence, um, all of these different piece, piece, pieces of language and content and um, knowledge are built into a, a very complex um, piece or pieces that are brought together. Anyways, I'll show you more in just a few minutes. So bear with me if I stumble a bit here and there. Uh, we also provide a simple tool for teachers to use uh, to differentiate instruction for, for all students again. So the components, uh, as I mentioned before, now we've got several different components to our program. We are a blended learning program, meaning that um, we believe that students should be provided with opportunities to learn both on and off screen. Um, so I'm going to show you all of the components, but please know that we're not prescriptive. We're not saying that you have to use every single component in a certain you know, order and in a certain way for it to be effective. What we've done is we provided a, a, a very uh, rich, uh, offering of, of, of resources um, and, and you all are professionals and we know how well you know that, that you've been doing an exceptional job <laughs> from from speaking with our team and, and their students who are your students at your school um, so we just want to provide you with resources that will help supplement your instruction um, provide your students with a little different way to work with and reinforce the learning that's already happening with your students with your curriculum so the first component I'd like to introduce to you all is their pre and post challenges. We have very short, quick, four task challenges prior to when they first start working on a particular lesson, as well as um, when they finish, wrap up the lesson. Uh, and that way you have a little bit of pre and post um, formative data to go with. And again, this is just a snapshot for you to see where they started, give you some baseline data and where they ended. We also have off-screen collaborative inquiry-based experiences, meaning that these are the um, play-based experiences that we provide in our lesson overviews. This is just one page of a lesson overview. Um, we try to give you everything you need to be up and running um, along with you know, professional development, but again, it's very flexible. So we've got the off-screen experiences if you like, especially when you're back in the classroom where kids can be up playing, interacting with each other, um, problem solving, solving challenges creatively or doing some word work. But anyways, there's a lot of different activities that we provide that again are very specific to the skill or concept that's being covered by each story. Uh, we also have uh, the stories themselves. Now, the stories themselves are, um, uh, again, they're, they're like a comic book, they're graphic novel style with this peach bubbles. I'm going to go ahead and I, I recorded a snapshot because I knew that while we were all online from so many different places all around the world, it might be difficult to show a live snapshot of the um, of the of the platform so i have recorded a short snippet so that you can get a a, a glimpse of what our stories and, and games look like uh on the platform themselves so as you can see um we've got the, our characters we've already talked about um the backstory of the neo world explorers is that uh it's 100 years in the future and uh, the earth was sick and, uh, you know, with, from pollution and whatnot. So everybody went into hibernation and now the neo explorers have come back to explore the earth to um, make sure it's safe and inhabitable. I'm going to backtrack here just a minute. So um, in this particular lesson that I'm showing you, I know it's going a little quick, so I'm going to pause it here and there to speak. Uh, but this one is a, a math lesson, a math story focused on um, interpreting multiplication equations in multiple ways. So the, it, it, the, the story itself goes over using um, different ways of working with uh, multiplication or solving problems with multiplication, using words, using algorithms, um, understanding the language, and then applying it to a, to a real world situation as best we can. Uh, so in this case, um, as you can see, they're, they're building an app and they're working on uh, putting examples into the app that, that they're building for uh, working with 
the, this interpretation of multiple falsehood equations. So uh, this is an example of a review game. Now, in the uh, platform, there are there's an arcade, and the arcade has uh, a, a multitude of critical thinking and problem solving, um, puzzle like games. Um, you know things that require that uh, the, the the ability of the students to really like hone in and problem solve. Um, in the in the stories themselves, in these lesson you know concept aligned stories. Uh, that the games are task-based, as you see here. And so th they're built in four levels, with the first level being the, the simplest and the fifth level being the most difficult. Um, as the students progress through the levels, then the teachers will get data back, this formative data I'm talking about, to see where the students are mastering that specific skill or concept. So these games, these review games within the stories are always going to be task-based. Um, and aligned with the specific skill or concept that are aligned with the standards that you're that you're using. Um, so as you can see, and again, this is going very quickly, but I'll be able to show you a, a still snapshot of the tasks on the next page. Um, the students are able to go through. If they select an incorrect answer, the story will um, or the game will uh, tell them that they made a mistake and to try again is, is illustrated here. Um, we try to use group concept thinking in our feedback as well. So when the students are working through the stories, as I mentioned, or through the games, the task-based games that are within the stories, you've got in this case um, four levels. The, the easiest level is this top left level, top left level, um, where it's very simple words, um, trying to explain this, the, uh, the multiplication equation with words and then being able to answer numbers. Uh, the bottom left is the second level um, where it's a little more difficult. The top right level, again, increasing in complex, complex complexity to the fourth level on the bottom right. Uh, we also provide the opportunity as students are moving through the program, if the teachers like, to um, have a connection um, uh, component where the students are asked to reflect on their learning, um, to apply some metacognitive um, skills to whatever skill or concept is being covered, and then to apply that reflection to some sort of project or task. Uh, the arcade games, as I mentioned, involve uh, a lot of critical thinking and problem solving. Here's a snapshot of some of our arcade games. The arcade games are always there, and the arcade games are embedded in the uh, big episodic adventure portion of our platform, which is the backstory, you know, where the, the explorers are, again, as I mentioned earlier, um, uh, come back to Earth to explore it, and then it has a big grand story. So all the mini lessons or the lesson-based stories are like a snapshot in the day of the Neo World's bigger adventure. Uh, these arcade games can be available all the time, or the teacher has the opportunity to turn them off for the students if they don't want them to be playing with them, you know, for whatever reasons at the, for a certain amount of time. So the teachers have the ability to toggle the arcade games on and off for their students. Um, one other uh, piece I forgot to mention, I apologize, is within the stories, there's the option for these students to listen to the stories if the teacher likes. So the teacher can also toggle back and forth between turning the audio on or off for the, each individual student. So if the story is at an appropriate reading level for the student, the student can you know, only have the option to read it. Or um, if the teacher likes, they can turn on the audio feature for the student to listen to them. Uh, this is a, going to be a quick review of our dashboard. Uh, again, check pre-recorded um, snapshot. But as you can see, we've got our standards-based lessons, as I mentioned, right now in math and literacy. Uh, the games, so those arcade games I mentioned, you'll be able to see which arcade games they're playing, which type of arcade games they're playing, and how long they're spending playing the arcade games. And then you'll also be able to track progress along the different independent lessons that the kids are, are working through. Um, to dig into a specific lesson, you would just click on literacy or math, depending on where you're wanting to go. Um, and then you'll be able to see where they, which lessons they've been working on. Um, the completion percentage tells you that they've completed the lesson all the way from the pretest through the post-test. 
when you dig down into a specific lesson, again, you can see their completion rate, as well as how many times they've played the games. You'll be able to see their pre and post results. And here you can see we had a 25 to uh, pre-game score to a 50% post-game uh, score. And then you'll be able to see their review game results. So you'll be able to see how if they're getting stuck at level one, if they're at level four, as well as a timestamp to see what days they played and, and, and how many times they played that day. Uh, there's also a comprehension game at the end, a quick four task challenge. Um, so you'll have some comprehension data as well. Uh, so, oops, bear with me. I hit the wrong button. So the uh, our safety, I'm going the wrong direction. Bear with me. All right, here we go. So going very slowly. There we go. Uh, just a quick recap, and I won't read this all to you, but um, we do meet all the safety requirements of um, that are um, required in the EU and the US and, and other international um, requirements for working with children and technology. Uh, and uh, again, we're just providing a quick reference list. This is our most recent um, research. Um, we'd like to make sure that we're using very recent research in all of our decisions that we make uh, instructionally for the game day and the stories. I th Denise, and as you know, mentioned earlier, we are um, hoping to kick off with you all in India. We're very excited for the opportunity to work with you all or for the possibility. And um, we currently work with schools in the United States, um, UK, Australia, and the Philippines. So just to sum everything up before we move to the Q&A, um, why in your world we know that you understand that what you choose to use with your students, uh, your, the, the curated technology is important that you make uh, these types of decisions um, carefully and with thought. Um, we also know that you're already very, very busy, that you have plenty on your plate. Um, again, having been a teacher myself, I, I know there's only so much time in the day. And while there might be a, a million amazing uh, technology programs out there that I wanted to use with my students, even back, you know, 10 years ago, um, that I only had so much time in the day to, to use those programs with my students, in addition to, you know, the, the other requirements of the, um, in my case, the PYP, and all, and all of those things that were happening. Um, but we really believe that Neo World will make your life easier and that we're giving your research-based instructional tools that engage and motivate your students, that fit really well with your philosophy, mm -hmm. and that give you some quick formative data that can help you differentiate instruction um, quickly and you know with, without too much extra work. Mm -hmm. So um, now is a great time to open up for questions or if there's anything that my team would like to add that I may have missed accidentally, <laughs> now is a great time to, uh, to get that. We're actually um, somewhat on time, so I'm pretty pleased. But, Janine, thank you for that. Uh, uh, hello, everybody. This is and, a And please be sure and unmute yourself if you have questions. Um, or maybe I should stop sharing my screen. I'm not sure. My team should let me know I can't see anything what? until I stop sharing. Were you able to hear? Um, were you able to hear us right now? Any Denise, questions? Can any you hear us? We can. I think, she, I think she might not be hearing us right now. I think uh, maybe I, we should just put on All chat. Right. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing so I can see. Deneen, can you hear us? Hopefully, I haven't been. Can you hear us tonight? Hi, Deneen. I think she can hear us. I think somebody wanted to ah, mention yay, something. Ah, There we are. It was, uh, Ajo, you no, I something? can't hear you. I'm sorry. Okay, good. Mute. That's why I was like, Denise. okay, this is a problem because I, all I could see was my screen. But now I can see you at least. So let me look in the. In you can't the, hear us. Uh, there okay. we go. Ah. Yay. Thank you, Alex. Okay, see, I knew it was me. Can you hear it's us, now? Me. us now? Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> it's always me. I'm always the one with the, okay. the problem so Deneen, child. Deneen, can you yes. hear us now? Yes, thank you. Okay, good. So, hello everyone. This is Ajoy Kapoor, part of Deneen and Kishan and Vasvi's 
uh, a, a, a team in Augusta and New World. Uh, thank you for your time just now. One of the things I just wanted to quickly say was that uh, because of, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, technology issues. Uh, we've not. Uh, we've taken the safety route this time, so we've not actually done the interactive session that we could do with Fiona uh, when we had a lot more time. So we were able to then, at that stage, with Fiona, demonstrate the two depth and breadth of the entire platform with a deep dive into it. Uh, so I think, as and when appropriate, uh, at a later stage, if any of you individually or in clusters wanted to do that, that might be quite useful for you to do, just to have a look at it in a lot more depth. So I, I just wanted to mention that to you because that may potentially not have come across in what essentially by and large was somewhat of a static presentation because we didn't want uh, we didn't want to do a live demonstration of the platform in the event so many people joining from all over the world got disconnected. I just wanted to mention that. Over to all of you for Q&As. While people are thinking about what questions they might have, um, just so I can tell all the teachers that are joining us, um, a couple of things. One is that uh, I will be looking at the list of uh, participants and I will be sending out invitations to everyone um, just so that you can have access, so that you get a chance to explore uh, the platform on your own. And then uh, if you want to roll it out with your students, you just need to get in touch with uh, me directly and I'll be happy to help set that up for you. And then the other thing I was going to ask uh, to the team is, could we get a copy also of just the slides of the presentation in case we had uh, teachers that wanted to look through some of the references and uh, review some of the slides instead of watching the whole video? Would that be possible? Sure, of absolutely. Course. Okay, great. I'll hand it over in case anyone have a question, you're welcome to unmute your microphone or uh, pop it in the chat. I have a question. Um, some of the uh, can you hear me yes yes yeah. thank you so some, some of the children uh when they go through these multiple options and uh, they get it wrong for the first time so if you're doing something in math and you for example so it's four plus seven and they get the answer wrong and they need to try again uh some of them try again enough of times to know which one is right by elimination so they're not really using their, um, the skills that they have, but they just do it by, you know, by elimination. They know how to move forward. So is there a way that we can, um, you know, monitor that bit? Yeah, thank you for asking. So with the pre and the post challenge, they do not have that opportunity. That way we're capturing some true you know, pre and post um, formative information. So in the pre and the post, if they choose an incorrect answer, it'll just keep going. Um, they won't have the opportunity to, to uh, game it. <laughs> okay. um, in the game itself, they have, now there's a practice game in the middle of the story um, where they can make mistakes, you know, like if they forget mm -hmm. to drag and drop, mm -hmm. like they don't read directions, which would be me. But, you know, again, a lot of our students, they're very smart and they think they know what to do. And anyways, then it doesn't mess up the data from the game itself. So they do have mm -hmm. the opportunity to practice. And then when they're playing the game, they have three chances to, to game it, to get it right. But, um, you know, that's kind of part of the prop plan is that for each level, um, there'll be four tasks. And so they've got to, they've got three tries for each task to move on to the next level. So it does give them the opportunity to game it a little bit, but that's okay because that's kind of a, the learning uh, theory behind what they're doing in that instance. But the pre and the post, they can't. Like they either, you know, they answer right the first time or, or, the, or wrong, you know. Of course, they won't know it. It'll just go through it. But okay. they can see their pre and post in addition to you being able to see the data that I showed very quickly in the in the in the uh, video, um, that students can also go in and see their own if they you know so that they can see how they're doing, and and check on uh, you know their pre and post data if they finished all of it as well as you know everything else. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. That was a great question. Honestly, that's the first time anybody's ever asked me that question. I can't believe it. <laughs> we, we have had some feedback from some of the parents. Uh, one yeah, of the I know. That we um, I think so, kids are smart. This is what they yeah. do when they play video yeah. games for yeah. fun. So I was games. wondering, you know, that the question came from the fact that could they, even though they make a mistake and they get an incorrect answer, 
can they still move on in a, in a different direction as opposed to if they get it right, then they move forward in a different direction. That's what my... Uh, that's I see. I yeah, I see. So right now, they'll play through the levels as it is now, but we're constantly um, adding new features and functions, you know, um, but as of, and new stories. But as of now, um, they would continue through the same path, but mm -hmm. let's okay. say that they're on level three and they, and they use their three tries, mm -hmm right then the system will ask them if they want to start from the beginning so like do you want to start all the way from level one do you want to start from where you left off or do you want to skip ahead to pass the game you know okay. And, okay. and depending on your instruction then that's what they will do okay okay great great thanks yeah Deneen, I, Thank I think there was someone who, who who had texted or typed a question i can't remember who but i just saw a flash come up oh okay sure right. i think it's i don't know Thank what the you. question is maybe Maybe if Alex could tell us what the question was, if there was something. Yeah, like, I think yeah. I can see it. If you yeah. can see it, Deneen, I think she just wanted yeah. some clarity around whether or not, um, like, I think she's asking about how much uh, potential customization there is in the activities in the games. Um, and yes. it, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's my understanding that it is a, uh, like the curriculum is uh, plotted and planned out and fixed in that way. So I don't think that there is a way to customize the games. Actually, correct? well, the games themselves are static at the moment. Doesn't mean that won't change down the road. But at the moment, the games are, are the games. Now we're just talking about the games, yeah. right? Yeah. But this, the lessons, the, the ability for teachers to create their own activities, meaning that a teacher could say, okay, I want this student to do multiplication. I want this student to do geometry. I, I, not that they would, but you know what I mean. That they can easily assign anything to differentiate to meet the needs of that student. Yeah, so like, let's say you have a teacher uh, or a student, I mean, who is in the fifth grade, but is reading at a third grade level. Um, the teacher could put the student into third grade uh, aligned activities, but the student won't see that because the student never sees it all looks the same. If you're in pre-K or eighth grade, it's all the same characters, the same main plot, you know, the same backstory. Uh, so it, it all looks very similar. The students don't see what grade level they're at. And, and we've done this purposefully because we do work with a lot of special needs kids um, who are like in middle school working on second grade stuff, you know, and they get tired of seeing baby looking stuff. So the feedback that they brought to us was that they love it because they're seeing things that are appropriate for them you know, being middle schoolers, even though maybe they read at a second grade level and vice versa. If you've got little kids, they're doing the same thing. Um, I see another question with um, the opportunity for collaboration or interaction. And the answer is yes. And again, I know it was difficult for you to see. It was very tiny. But in our lesson overviews, we provide um, ideas and opportunities for students to uh, collaborate, work together, play games together. Now, I know there's ways to do this online as well as in the classroom, um, depending on what platform, you know, what learning platform you're using with the kids. Um, so we'd be happy to help you figure that out if you want to do, do this online. Or, or, of course, when you get back into the classroom and you're working with them face-to-face, -face, then it'll be obvious. Um, but the answer is yes, Jennifer. Thank you. And if I missed any of your questions, let me know, or if I didn't understand them, please let me know. I, I think what we'll also do, if that's okay, uh, Alex, is uh, with your permission, uh, sorry, it's Ajoya here again, is that uh, we'll also put together and send to you so you can populate it to everybody who's on the call and anyone else as well, a series of Q&As that we've had from past experiences uh, from other schools and other uh, and other places so that may sort of answer some questions that people might have and as they're thinking about this in the future uh so we'll set we, we we'll set some predetermined questions and answers to those as well and if there are any new ones then please send them through that mm -hmm. sounds great yeah. also, oh sorry i'm sorry no go ahead i, I was just saying that's totally that. fine we can send that out as well um with great. all the other resources um to make sure people yeah, have you. the questions answered that they need answered and then they can get started really hit the ground running and start uh, rolling it out, sharing with their kids, engaging them, uh, using the platform during this virtual learning time. 
Right. And we and we do offer like free flexible professional development as well to make sure the teachers are very well supported so that they're not expected to figure it out on their own necessarily. Um, we can do this very quickly and, you know, flexibly um, with time zones and whatnot. Uh, and also, I think I don't remember if we mentioned that we can also provide a storyboard, a sample storyboard and a lesson overview so you can see an example of what these off-screen experiences look like and look like in connection with the on-screen story. Um, and, and I think, uh, sorry, Denise. Hi, it's a joy again. I think no what's really, what really attracted, if you will, myself, Kishan, and Vasvi as, uh, you know, ASB parents, if you will, for a ninth grader and a, and, 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 and a junior grader uh, was the fact as to how uh, the flexibility, the flexibility and nimbleness uh, of this platform and how by default it seems to have, uh, uh, they seem to be an alignment, if you will, of the objectives and the value systems that we have at ASB, which was quite fascinating for us. And over and above that, what I particularly like is the curation of this, is that actually we could, if we wanted to, and if we de decided as a school that this was the right way to go, we could actually request the platform providers to curate specifically for us uh, 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 you know, on specific aspects, if that's what we wanted to do. So I just wanted to mention that as well, that there is a, a fair degree of flexibility to meet the objectives and value systems of a particular school such as ASB as well.